Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we have Masterboard Mania. We have one winning color scheme and we're going to make four mixed media projects using it. Here's a sneak peek of the lovely Masterboard that we are going to create and a sneak peek of the four different projects and the color scheme. So where did we start? This is 11 by 17 paper and I'm pulling napkins. Now these are napkins that do not really have focal images, but they have interesting colors. And I'm going to use the colors that are in the napkins to guide my creative process and the choices here. So I'm looking at this willow leaves napkin and I'm pulling colors. Now these are colors that I have in my stash and I've swatched them out and this is going to help me select the colors. Now I'm not going to use all those colors but I am going to go down that road. Since the leaves of that willow leaves napkin is guiding me I'm thinking botanical and I grabbed Tim Holtz tissue papers that um, also are botanical. Now, when I look at this tissue paper, I'm thinking always about the focal image, but I don't want to use it as a focal image. I want these as details and interesting tidbits in the background. So I'm ripping up the tissue paper from Tim Holtz and I'm ripping up the napkin and just layering it on my 11 by 17 paper. Now this is just plain copy paper. I don't want it thick because I know I'm going to be gluing it on to card bases and art journal pages and I don't need that extra thickness. You can decide if you're, you know, if you want to do it on cardstock or on cardboard or whatever. Depends on how you're going to use it. Sometimes I'm putting the Tim Holtz paper on top, sometimes I'm putting it underneath. Really, it doesn't matter. None of this is going to be focal images. These are just going to be little bits that, one, add texture from the napkin, from the tissue paper, and two, little bits of interest that are peeking through at the end. When you start out a master board, you never really know how much of those first layers are going to show that willow leaves napkin definitely guided my choice of colors and theme and selection of stencils so pattern so it did that now when i got to this level i looked around and i found this large coffee filter that i had cleaned off some stencil butters in turquoise it has a shimmer to it and I just decided to glue that down. Now with the addition of this, I really selected the color story. I, it definitely is going into that turquoise level. Now I'm placing this on top of some of those botanical Tim Holtz ones because I don't want to, I'm not using them as focal images and flowers. I could, but that's not my goal here. So I'm just adding it and I used every little bit layering up of that tissue paper. Now this is a homemade stamp that I made and I will put a link to the video where I show how I created this. And I'm using Payne's Gray, which is a blue toned gray. It's not as dark as black and I'm stamping with that. And again, I'm choosing it and the stencils because they're all very botanical feeling. Then I grab some of that green yellow paint and I'm just scraping it on with a key card. And that's really adding. So my color scheme is pretty much picked. I've got teak, turquoise, yellow green, burnt umber, which is I'm scraping on right now. Now, right about now, it's looking like a bit of a hot mess and every master board is going to go there, but we're not done because it's all about adding those layers. I grab this leafy texture 12 by 12 stencil from the Crafters Workshop and I'm using white acrylic paint and I'm hit targeting a lot of the turquoise area and that's breaking it up. It's adding movement to the background and pushing things to the background and starting that really or continuing the love the layering effect. And I absolutely love the effect this has to this, the background. Now I grab this Summer Meadow stencil 
again from the crafters workshop and I grabbed Prussian blue. Now I thought the Prussian blue would be the right tone, a little bit of a darker than the turquoise. But as I'm adding this, I'm not feeling it. I'm really, I do not like the addition. Something about the blue is just off with where everything else was. But I just kept going. Because again, when you're making a master board or a background, you just keep going. And if you don't like something, you just keep adding more layers. And we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how to work around that. Well, here's one way. I'm putting bright aqua paint, which is a lighter bit of that turquoise, and I'm stamping over top of that Prussian blue edition I did with the Summer Meadow stencil. This is pushing that back, blocking it, making it so that that part, that image, isn't front and center. Then I'm adding some black, again, with this Summer Meadow stencil. There are lots of botanical motifs on it, so it's just very, very rich. And I'm stenciling with black. This is adding contrast. And again, I'm going over top of what I did with that Prussian blue because I didn't like it. I wanted it, I wanted to make it fade to the background. With the addition of these dots, I'm thinking <coughs> very much jungle themed. Although I don't go there. Now I'm taking the makeup sponge with black paint and I'm edging this and I'm doing this at this stage, even though this is a master board, because I want to see if I'm done. And often when I do the edging, that gives me an idea of a finished project. I'm still not liking that Prussian blue edition. So I'm taking some white acrylic paint, watering it down. You can use white gesso, brushing it over top. And this is just knocking it back making it somewhat disappear. And I love how it softens it, pushes that back, and I'm now breathing easy. You can still see the pattern there, but the blue is, is, is nullified in, in a lot of ways. This is Barberry Buds, and I start stenciling with unbleached titanium. And it's not really giving me the effect that I want. So I add some burnt umber with it and I go back over it. And this really warms it up. I love, love, love how that worked. It's adding a little bit of contrast. It's warming up the background. It just works. So when you're trying things, that's exactly what you're doing. You're trying this or that. If it doesn't work, you can stencil over it or wipe it off with a baby wipe. It's paper and paint. Have fun. In real life, you can still see bits of that initial napkin and those Tim Holtz papers, but they gave me the theme. They gave me the color scheme. And sometimes things play more of a supporting role than a front and center role. Some of this is I'm putting darker burnt umber. Some of it's more faded. Now that I'm loving my background, my, my master board, I'm adding a little bit of fine detail with a couple stamps from the faded type Tim Holtz collection. One of my newest and favorite stamp sets. You get a lot of use out of it if you're looking for a good basic one. Here's the second one. Do you, anybody else see a jungle theme? Then I grab some modeling paste. This is copper penny modeling paste from the crafters workshop. I don't have copper paint, so I thin this down and I splatter with it. And that color is across from the teals and turquoise that I have in the background. So it really makes it pop and really guided the focal image selections that I made. So there's our background and our color scheme, green, yellow, turquoise, and burnt umber with the addition of black and white. And then that little bit of copper. 
If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button, click on the bell, and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for watching. So I am now going to decide what I want to make with my master board. And I decide that I'm going to make a six by six card and I'm cutting it five and a half by five and a half with this Tim Holtz ton tonic mini cutter. And that's going to allow me to have a border. I'm also making a five by seven card and I'm going to cut it six and a half by four and a half. And that'll give me a border. It's a look I like, but you can go right to the edge if you'd like. I'm also going to do an art journal page in my 7x10 mixed media, Kansa mixed media journal. Now before I glue this down, I am edging all the inserts. Now this is for the cards, will prevent me from getting this black on the white of the card, that border part, and keeping it clean. So I'm giving this all edging it before I glue it down. If you forget to do it at this stage, you can do it afterwards, but you run the risk of getting it, smudging it on the white. Now this is a mini composition book and I had a little bit of piece, little piece left and it was just the right size. So I am using matte medium, gel matte medium and putting it on the front and the back of this mini composition book. This is my seven by 10 mixed media page that I've taken off the coil and I'm putting the gel medium on the mixed media paper as well as on the back of my master board and using a brayer to push it down. This helps me maintain, get a good contact. And I'm just continuing on using the gel medium and gluing it onto whatever substrate I want. You can put this on a coaster, you can put it onto a canvas board. I think one of my favorite uses for master boards is to make backgrounds for cards like this one. You don't even need a focal point. You can just leave that as abstract art on the card. There seemed to be a swoop here, so I drew that line and then I come in and shade. This is a good way of breaking up a background and adding to a focal image. Now at this time, I'll be honest, I don't have a plan for what focal image is going on here. On this one, I decided I'm going to use this Magnolia Blossom. This comes from supercoloring.com and I'll put a link to it and the Creative Commons license that it comes under. It's a, a printable that you can use and resize to fit your project. And I'm gluing it down after I cut it out with the matte medium as well. Now I'm gonna use this napkin from Ninny's Napkins and I'll put the link to the name of the napkin in the description box under the Ninny, Ninny's Napkin affiliate link. I've taken off the extra plies and glued it down onto white copy paper because I don't want the background to show through. I decide I'm gonna use these poppies for the art journal page, but I need two panels of it, so I'm gonna do the same. I remove the excess plies and I'm gluing it down onto copy paper and off camera, I'll be doing all that fussy cutting. You don't need to see me cut. With this six by six card, I am now going to colorize this magnolia. And my favorite way is to use acrylic paint and gesso. I'm using unbleached titanium and white gesso and painting it on. And I kind of leave where the line work is. I don't try to get too close. And I'm pretty heavy handy handed with the paint. I don't go extra smooth. I add, this adds texture. Now I'm shading the magnolia in with the brown. This is the burnt umber. Again, it's the same brown that I use in the stenciling in the background. You want all your components to work together, so don't be changing up the colors, the browns, the greens. You want something to work together. 
So use that, those same colors and that's going to make it all work. Speaking of which, I've now taken that yellow green and the brown, mix them together to paint the base of the leaves. That's because that yellow green is in the background and that brown is in the background. And again, you want everything to work together. I come back and shade with another green, but the tone really matches the colors that are in the background. My magnolia got a little bit dark, so I'm coming in and adding more white. I didn't, I wanted it whiter than creamy or yellow. Personal choice. Magnolias come in all shapes and sizes. And right now they are in peak bloom, blooming on Vancouver Island. So I did see some magnolias on my walk. I grab a sentiment from my Through the Garden Gate sentiment pack, which is available at Nanny's Napkins. You can check it out. There is a link and a coupon code to Nanny's Napkins. And I'm splattering with gold. I love that card. So let's move on to the five by seven. I've glued down that mushroom after I've cut it, did the fussy cutting. And then I had a sentiment from my Simplify sentiment pack. And this I had printed out onto sticker paper. So I'm peeling it and sticking it down. Couldn't be easier. And it says Simplify, Slow Down, Enjoy. So I've got the poppies all fussy cut it and another sentiment from my Simplify sentiment pack. But before I do that, I want to show you some other possible focal images. Now the background is teal, so any focal image that's across the color wheel or is going to work. Or something that's brown, like the brown that we added. This rabbit one would look so adorable on this page as well. There are a whole collection of toadstool and mushroom ones, napkins, and all of these napkins, this owl one, come from ninniesnapkins.com. Grab a coffee and go check it out. This Gerber daisy, the right color to go with my background here. More toadstools, I've just picked. So I had lots of options for what I could use. But let's finish these pages. I'm gluing the poppies down with the gel medium. That's because the with the copy paper and the napkin, it's a little bit thick. And you can turn the poppies any which way. I cut out some poppy leaves there as well. And that one is the same as the one on the bottom, but I turned it so that it looks like it may be a different one. Here's my mini composition book, and I just put on there words matter. This could be a a book that you used for affirmations, or it could be a word, a book that you collect quotes in. I grab my General's Charcoal Pencil. This is the medium one, and I'm sketching around there, and now I'm shading. Now, on the cards, I would not use my General's Charcoal Pencil. Why? Because it will smudge, and a card is going to be handled. My art journal page, however, would not. If you want to use it on an, a card, you're going to have to spray it with a fixative. So I'm going over this. You need to make sure that it is completely dry before you use your General's Charcoal or you will rip the napkin or it just simply won't work. That's why you see me drying it here because when I did some shading on there, it got a little damp and, and it, nothing was working. Love how these poppies really pop off this background. I'm using a little bit of that lime green or yellow green and painting the center of the poppies. It was very yellow and there was no yellow on this page. So I wanted it to speak with everything that's going on. Now that had, I had two leaves. So I put some of that yellow green in the corner and now I'm just sketching out the illusion of another poppy leaf at the top. And I'm just doing that with my charcoal pencil. I'm looking at the ones that I had cut from the napkin 
and then this third I'm just adding the third one to make it all work on my page and there's mine and there's that one eh, not bad I'm adding a little more of that light yellow green and you can see how it ties in with that yellow green in the background I've decided to shade on these toadstools. You could skip this step, but it's just such, I enjoy doing the shading. So I'm just adding it. That adds a lot of definition. Outlining the sentiment with my black Posca pen and doing some doodling around the edge. Then I grab some white thinned paint. This is what I, the paint I use to splatter with and my liner brush. And I'm just adding those dots. I'm making them a little whiter, a little brighter. And it's also adding some texture to my card. The sentiment that I had, it, the printer was out of ink or toner at the time. So I just wanted to darken it up with my Posca pen. And I'm edging the page, lining around the page and the mini composition book as well. I like making these composition books. They make really great gifts, stocking stuffers, housewarming, just nice to have on hand. I'm using the Copper Penny modeling paste and just adding some dots to the sentiment here. And there are our four finished projects four different focal points, four different things. Using the same master board that uses turquoise, burnt umber, and yellow green. I hope you give this color combo and making master boards a try. I'd love to see you share it on my Facebook group, Mixed Media Creations. So this again is a six by six card. using a printable from supercoloring.com. This is a five by seven card. The base is just a cheap one and the focal image comes from a napkin, from Ninny's napkins. Mini composition book, no focal image. But perfect for using those little bits. And an art journal page. 7x10 using a napkin again as the focal image. Which one is your favorite? Leave your answer in the, in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you and I answer every comment. Bye for now.